This is Dan from LearningCameras.com and I've got the new Chromecast in and we've been using it for a couple days so but here's a here's a review of the unit and how it works. Also in regards to this I'm also have a computer with a Chrome uh, tab open so we'll go ahead and try the streaming with that and I also have the brand new Nexus 7 so if you want to go ahead and see I've got a couple videos on this as well giving my overall impressions and a review of this unit. Uh, overall it looks very very nice and uh, very considerable upgrade, even though some of the specs are minor and the look is about the same. Uh, the, the style of the tablet is about the same. It definitely is a step up from, from what we were using before. So um, onto the Chromecast, it, it really by itself is uh, just a very small dongle, a little bit bigger than what you would see from a USB, uh, a USB storage device. And it has an HDMI on it and it plugs right into your HDMI cable. Now, thankfully, uh, Google did include this 3-inch extension. So, for example, if you have two HDMI ports really close together and you can't quite get it in, or let's say you're flat up against a wall and you don't think it's going to fit back there because it's too long, go ahead and use this. I I'd probably use it anyway just to get it a little bit further away from the TV. And, uh, and then you have that bendable unit just in case you are very close or just in case you need to leave some room to access some of the other HDMI ports. Now, um, this is not powered. That was not a big issue for me. It has a, a micro USB and it comes with a cable and a charger and the cable sufficiently long. I had no issues plugging this in and mounting it to a TV. I, I guess the only time it would be a bother is if you have a TV that's wall mounted and you don't have an extra power supply up there by the TV. It would be an extra cable that maybe you'd have to run through the wall. Um, that's about the only downside I could possibly see. For everybody else, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So no hiccups. Um, installation is very easy. Plug this right into the HDMI cable, plug this into a power supply, and you're going to be good to go. So we'll go ahead and do that right now, and then we'll be back in a minute. If you head to LearnCameras.com, we do have some links set up where you can purchase this. Uh, I have a link set up for Amazon. That's where I buy most of my stuff because as a Prime member, I get free two-day shipping and $4 for one-day shipping. If you're not a Prime member, you can still get free shipping. It'll just be a normal shipping delivery on this item. Google's going to charge you for that shipping, so that's why I like to go to Amazon to save that money on that. Uh, also, right now in most states, it's going to be tax-free. If you go to your local Best Buy store, you can also buy it there. Uh, it will be taxed, but you won't have to worry about the shipping costs, and you might be able to pick it up right away. Now, Google was giving away Netflix with this three months. It looks like that functionality might be pulled, so you can check and see if it's still open in Best Buy or even on Amazon. But I know Google's pulled it from their website, so you might not be able to get that anymore. They've had a lot of sales volume. So, but check out those links at learningcameras.com. And uh, if you use those, it kind of helps us out a little bit. So uh, to keep things going, keep some reviews going. And uh, if not, Best Buy and Google Store directly are carrying this. Now that we've got it plugged in, we have a couple different options on how we can play this. So we can either use a, a, a tablet or phone uh, that has these features enabled. So the features are going to be enabled right now for all Android systems running uh, two point, actually running 4.3 and up is, is the only unfortunate part. It looks like that's a limitation of it right there. Uh, it's also going to be available for Apple devices as well. So we will be able to see these uh, on an Apple uh, device. So uh, when you come to YouTube on on the tablet, for example, and you're playing a video, you do have the option up at the top for a Chromecast. And if you click on that, it's going to ask you which device you would like to use. You can have multiple set up. And I'm going to go ahead and select my living room because that's the TV that I have it. And you're going to see it connecting and it'll start displaying that onto the TV. Now, one of the nice things about this is that it's not actually using my tablet resources. So I can go ahead and click home and I can be doing everything else that I want to do. It's still perfectly uh, fast and I can click back up here and get back to the video. So all of that's being done uh, straight from Google streaming through the web and not through the tablet. Now, when we get to the computer, uh, there's two different ways to do things on the computer. One is going to be through the uh, built-in uh, built-in functionality that Google has enabled into some of their uh, into some of their web apps and also into others. So right now, the only support is for uh, most Google services and then Netflix. So one of them is YouTube. So you can see right here on YouTube at the very right, I have a new option to Chromecast that to my living room. And we'll go ahead and select that. And that is going to give me that video now on my television straight from my computer. 
and since it's not actually streaming it straight from my computer, I still have all of my computer resources available, so that's nice. Now, uh, the other way to do it is gonna be with a service that does not have this functionality built in right now. So let me uh, select that to go back to my computer. And we're gonna go to something like Pandora. Now Pandora is getting this functionality built in, but it's not there yet. So if I am uh, listening to some music on Pandora and wanna do it, Google has an option that they've enabled for Chrome tabs to be able to click on the Chrome tab and actually have that output to the living room. And you can do this with audio and with video or basically any tab that you would want there. You can put your Facebook tab on there if you want. And actually there is functionality in there uh, that's also in a beta to be able to actually send your entire desktop screen in there. So as far as quality goes, there's three options for quality on this. And one is 480 and the other one is a 720p regular and then a 720p high bandwidth. Now, for me, I was unable to get any of them working other than the 480 with uh, streaming video especially. It, there was just too, many, too much lag and everything like that, even though I have no problem streaming 1080p video from any other service, and it works fine when using the, uh, the built-in controllers in YouTube or Netflix. No problems at all streaming at a high definition quality, but for whatever reason, when I try to use the tab, that's when I begin to have issues as far as my quality is concerned. So, you know, Google brands this as a beta when it comes to the tab, and it definitely is. And in fact, I think it's a little bit more like an alpha in many ways because it just, it didn't work very well for me. Now, the other issue that I was having is um, I have a receiver with HDMI pass-through, so I can't plug my dongle right into the receiver or else I would get no audio from it. Now, you might not have this issue if you have most of the newer receivers. Uh, HDMI audio comes right through the HDMI port of most receivers. However, for me, it doesn't. So I'm plugging this directly into my TV and then sending the audio optically out from my TV into my receiver. Now, this works fine when I'm playing from my tablet. It also works fine when I'm using some of the built-in functionality into like YouTube and Netflix. However, when I try to use the, um, the functionality of the Chrome tab, that's when I begin to have issues. My audio is completely scrambled. You can't even hear it hardly. It just doesn't work. For whatever reason, it's not working. So if any of you have any advice, let me know. But I, I think it's on Google's side because it definitely works uh, e even with the same computer as long as I hit here and Chromecast it straight from the button built into YouTube or uh, Netflix right now. But as soon as I try to use their beta feature, which is that tab, that's when I begin to have the issue. So my audio plays fine on the TV, so you shouldn't have issues unless you're trying to send audio from your TV to your receiver, and then you could possibly have issues. Uh, but for most of you, just plugging it directly into the receiver will probably work for you. I plug mine in, and I got the video feed fine. Uh, the audio is because I have HDMI pass-through on that, so that's the only reason that that didn't work. So you should be fine with that. So overall, it seems like a great tool. 35 bucks really gets you a lot for this. Um, the functionality is coming to a lot of new apps. Uh, Google opened up the API to get that working. It's also going to be in a lot more web apps soon. Pandora should have it built in, for example, very shortly. Google has also announced that it might be coming into Google TV devices, so you won't actually need to get a Chromecast if you already have a Google TV. I'd love to see that even a little bit more because one of the things that I love about Google TV is it connects directly into, uh, in line with my existing cable provider. So I don't have to have uh, basically use up another input. I don't have to switch anything like that. So I'd love to have that ability basically built in to my, um, my Google TV device rather than having to use a separate one. But for $35, man, it, even with just YouTube and my audio streaming, that is a lot of functionality for the price. So, I mean, most, most streamers are going to run you at least 60 bucks and up. Uh, Apple TV is going to run you 100 bucks and up. So, uh, definitely Google TV devices are 100 bucks and up as well. So, definitely you're getting the functionality that we needed in a device for a very inexpensive amount. Uh, definitely a no-brainer. And I can't wait to see what, what Google's able to do with this as soon as we start seeing some of the app developers build this into their apps. Um, definitely a lot of possibilities for the future.